our art is really our soul and and that's what makes art so special because we we're born on this planet given a shell which is our gender race so on and so forth that ex like exploration into your soul is what matters most to me as an artist Hi, my name is Ash Thorpe and I'm a digital artist. I've been in love with the concept of art ever since I was a child. And I'm a traditionally taught artist working in illustration. I've then taken those skills and applied them to the digital art world. And I've been making digital art for the past 25 years. The first time I became aware of NFTs was through my friend, Mike Winkleman, AKA Beeple. I then got really fascinated with the concept of it because of the authorship to digital artists, obviously, which unlocks so, so many possibilities. I decided to focus on building a collection of work, which I've titled Evident Mirror, which is what we're discussing today. I was fortunate enough to have my Genesis NFT sold at the auction house Christie's as my first NFT. Um, so that's kind of the foray into all these things. I think the thing that I love about NFTs or maybe excite me the most about it is just the sovereignty it brings to artists. And it really allows artists to have complete authorships uh, over their work in the digital space. And this has never been done. So thanks to the technology, it's really allowed artists to, to, to retain sovereignty to their work. I think there's a lot of common themes and connections between the work that I'm naturally drawn to and the author's work. This piece specifically, the Evident Mirror piece, which is a self-titled piece, is more about the merging of humanity and machine and the, the emergence of AI, artificial intelligence, and artificial life. When it comes to this piece, and I would say it's more or less about trying to find a way to retain authenticity as we merge basically the fight to be a human to own your authenticity to own your individuality you know the moment that we're able to um, digitize memory the moment where and i use digitizing quotes um, because that's probably not the term we're going to use when we figure out how to to manifest memories or dreams or all those things because all we are is a summation of our memories but um with this piece i was just trying to kind of capture some of the oddities some of the nightmarish qualities but at the same time some of the beauty of it too and that variety of all those things combined in that cluster that makes life so unique and special every piece has an intention for me so there's all it always starts with an intended meaning art is art is a, is a, is a mobile for me to communicate my curiosities so with evident mirror it was basically trying to find a way to graphically or visually show a concept of like the merging between machine and, and humanity and potentially like an offset altered version of ourselves. So with me, when I go off to make something like that, it's something so grand and vast, it's, it usually just starts off with an idea, then it becomes a sketch in my sketchbook. Those ideas and sketches turn into references that support that idea. Then I go into the computer and I have a long relationship with my computer and all of the different things in the computer to actually manifest the work. And then at the end of the day, really the success for any piece for me is represented by how close it gets to the truest form of my original intention. I'd say maybe it's a through line through most of my work is uh, my personal work is I, I'm a big fan of monochromatic imagery and I love simplifying down things to their core and their graphical approach to things. So when I use color, it's got an intention to invoke emotions. So I'd say that's probably the through line for most of my own personal work. And especially this piece, if you look at it, the main center color is red and everything is built on a concept basically in this. So, yeah. My style you know, style is, it comes from failure and constant failure and taking your own path as an artist. And I think 
your style comes from those failures and how you overcome them. It's like a water, you know, water running through land. It makes its own pattern if you look at it from up top. So, and everybody has their own signature style based on how they fail and what they deal with those failures. So I'd say for, for my style, it really just kind of comes from years of trying hard to manage the photorealism and try to get the images out of my mind and get them through the computer. So, um, I mean, my style is constantly evolving, but as of now, I'd say it's, it's a form of hyperrealism and surrealism, probably a connection between those two worlds. Oh, I mean, everything really. <laughs> I take everything with a grain of salt or, you know, by the gallon. So I'd say first and foremost, the thing that probably inspires me most is, you know, my love of nature, being in nature, um, being humbled by nature, learning from it. In regards to other humans that inspire me that are artists, I probably say like, you know, Da Vinci's always been somebody that I've looked up to and studied. Um, I think not just only the art, but at the same time, the most important thing is he had a life well lived and he's a very curious person. Oh, I mean, the way that I work is I usually have four to five projects in flux at all times. So most of my projects take about three to, to, to 12 months to reveal um, or to finalize. So um, basically I'm just wanting to share the next cycle of the work that's coming out yeah <laughs> it's all in a cycle <laughs>